Uh, raise your hands if anyone has tried yoga before. I can't see everyone, but I think it's a pretty good number. Obviously, yoga is popular. In the media, we know that yoga promotes our health and well-being. Research informs us that yoga reduces our anxiety and stress, enhances our creativity, and the end result is we gain a positive outlook in life. Interestingly, and some of us may not know this, yoga has been in this country for more than 100 years. It's becoming more visible now. I bring this up because I'm interested in studying how ideas spread and become popular. My own research for many years, leading a project relying on archival sources, traces the history of yoga in the US. I will show you how yoga spread in popularity and what that teaches us about the spread of ideas in society. I will do that from a human flourishing and a human development perspective. In essence, we will see what happens when an idea is introduced for the first time and how do people receive it and perceive the idea. To do so, we are all going to go back in time to places and identify the people who are instrumental not only in the spread of ideas, but also for overhauling our perspectives and worldviews that impact our health and well-being even today. So how do ideas become popular? What makes ideas enter the mainstream? The origin story for yoga goes all the way back to 1893 to Chicago in the World's Fair, and it was introduced by a young monk by the name Swami Vivekananda. Understandably, the idea did not catch fire right away. Change does not happen overnight. It takes time, especially when ideas require or involve us to become familiar with something that's outside of our cultural experience. The initial interest in yoga was confined to a very small group of highly successful people who we might recognize as influencers today. What you will also be very interested in knowing is that this group comprised primarily of women who were suffragettes and who advocated for the right of women to vote. Three women in particular, Enid Yandel, Bertha Palmer, and Harriet Monroe, catapulted to the peak of their professional success and careers in sculpture, in philanthropy, and poetry. These women were change makers, and they belonged to a well-established, stable professional network. In addition to the change makers and these early adopters, the idea of yoga also was disseminated or was spurred on when the young Swami or the monk traveled to many small towns as a part of a lecture, like a speaking tour, where he interacted with audiences and elicited very strong reactions. Understandably, again, the audiences were very skeptical about the idea of yoga when it was presented to them first, stirring more controversy and debate. And as we know now, spurring controversy and debate is actually very good for disseminating ideas even further. Therefore, the audiences from the small towns also deserve credit for the spread of ideas and making yoga popular today. I've shared with you one example of an international idea that can become popular and has entered the mainstream. Sometimes good ideas can die and bad ideas can stick, 
However, ideas like yoga stick because they are about our subjective experience. They are the experience of ourself. And what does that translate into? It means no fancy setup, no fancy clothing. Well, and sometimes it means we don't have to compare ourselves with anybody else. There is really no competition. All we need to do is to bring our own selves. How hard can that be? In addition to this, three other factors also helped in the spread of yoga. Number one, the monk was an extraordinary influencer. He spoke powerfully to large and diverse audiences and was unfazed by criticism or controversy. Number two, he built a coalition of change makers, primarily consisting of women who advocated for these ideas. And number three, he presented the idea but did not proclaim ownership, which is an important reason why, even to this day, yoga exists as an open-sourced practice that is available to enhance the well-being of all of us in this room and beyond. Thank you.